Hi everyone, I'm Sydney and welcome back to The Rush Life. If you can't tell by the title of this video, we are expecting our first child together and are finally out of the first trimester. So I thought I'd share some tips and must-haves um, that helped me get through uh, this very tiring time. Um, so first, be prepared to be tired lots of naps. There were mornings that I woke up and I was like, do I really want to be an attorney today? Um, I'll just miss court. I'll get disbarred, whatever. Um, obviously, I always got out of bed and made it to court on time. But those are the thoughts that cross through your head because you are so tired. During this time, you're literally growing everything for the baby. Arms, legs, organs everything so your body is literally working in overtime and you will feel it trust me you will be tired so make sure you're taking lots of naps and um, i took car naps naps in my office i took naps wherever i could when i was just so tired because you'll get to a point where your eyes are just so heavy you can't keep them open anymore um also be sure to be aware of that so that way when people are asking you to do 10 million things if you don't feel like doing it don't go because you're going to be miserable and just be thinking about when you can leave, when you can leave. So take this time to be selfish for yourself and get those naps in. Second tip, drink lots and lots of water. Um, my mouth was constantly dry. Um, I was always thirsty. I was waking up in the middle of the night and I was thirsty. Um, which also means be prepared to use the bathroom a lot. Before you leave to go somewhere, use the bathroom. I got stuck in traffic on my way home and it was something that i thought would get take 20 minutes to get home boy was i wrong it turned into 45 minutes and i almost peed my pants i'm telling you it was terrible so uh lesson learned there before you leave somewhere always use the bathroom third thing to be aware of nausea now i did not have morning th sickness thank God. Uh, but I did experience some nausea. Um, the thing that I helped, uh, found that helped most was the pink stork tea. Um, this you just take one of the tea bags and you mix it into a cup of water, let it steep a few minutes, and you drink it and it cured a lot of my stomach aches. Now obviously I always didn't have hot water with me and able to make this tea. So something else I found um, useful were these tummy drops. Um, the tummy drops this is the sweet ginger pear and i'm gonna link all this stuff below so that way you guys can find it um these helped a lot they settled my stomach very quickly so i always had these in my briefcase in my car pockets you name it and it just made life easier it made my stomach ache go away pretty pretty quickly um now the flavor i mean it's very bitey right very uh spicy almost because of the ginger <laughs> Um, they have another flavor that doesn't have the pear in it, so I got the pear to make it less bitey. Um, so I really enjoyed these. Uh, another one that I used were the uh, Peggy Pop Drops, or Preggy Pop Drops, my, my bad. And um, my favorite is the Sour Raspberry. This one has um, four flavors in it. Ras uh, sour raspberry, green apple, um, sour lemon, and tangerine. Now, the only thing with these are, these have 12 grams of sugar in each a piece so no wonder they taste better um but you know i try and watch my sugar um because i already have a sweet tooth as is so i mean as these taste better i noticed that these actually worked better um obviously had to get past the taste though um so that's something i and like i said i didn't have morning sickness i was lucky there i didn't have night sickness no i didn't throw up at all all i had was nausea um, and those three things really helped me out using them in together. Um, another tip is my skin got super, super dry. And of course, like every other person, I'm worried about stretch marks. So what I used to do um, in the morning and after showers, I use the um, Palmer's Cocoa Butter Formula. Everybody talks about this. Moms now, moms from ages ago. This is the stuff that everyone swears by. Um, we've always used cocoa butter lotion in our household, so this is really nothing new. Um, so I use this in the morning once I get out of the showers. Um, and another thing I use, I can't find my bottle of it right now. Um, that means my dog probably got it and took it somewhere and hit it. Um, it's by Belly Beauty and it's a oil. It's a um, elasticity uh, belly oil and it's kind of lavender in scent. 
Um, so I put that on my belly and uh, my outer thighs every night after I get out of the shower. Because uh, it's obviously a little bit more heavier, but oil helps penetrate your skin better. So I've found that to be um, useful. So that's the um, concoction I'm using right now. Obviously, I'll let you know how it goes at the end, if it worked for stretch marks or not. Um, but it's keeping my skin moisturized. Um, and that was something I definitely saw a big difference is I had really, really dry skin. And finally, you want to make sure that you're taking prenatal vitamins. It doesn't really matter what you use. Um, I just use GNC Women's um, Prenatal Formula with DHA. Um, they, you can get this bottle there. I just bought um, another obviously packs is these it's a 30 day supply and it, they had buy two get one free so i just stocked up on these um these don't have a bad flavor to them um i've never burped it up or anything like that and uh, this is the size everyone talks about prenatals being like these horse shoe size met or you know horse um pills and it, they're, they're really not they're not bad so i take three of these a day that's what the uh, recommendation is um and obviously that's very important in um in fetal development and also if you're watching this before you get pregnant you really should start taking prenatal vitamins like one to two months before you're actually trying to conceive because the folic acid that's in this is very important for um, brain development and um, a lot of research shows that so um, that's just a little tip for my mamas that aren't um, pregnant yet but maybe trying make sure to get on those prenatal vitamins and also, I haven't noticed um, a difference in my nails or my skin. Um, I'm sorry, not my skin, my hair. I, had, I don't have thicker hair or anything like that. Unfortunately, I'm always going to have stick straight, thin hair, um, and prenatal vitamins aren't going to change that in any way. So another thing that happens in your first trimester is you have cravings. Oh my gosh, I had major cravings the first thing that i mean the thing that was really a staple throughout my first trimester was i had to have a bagel from tim hortons it had to be an asiago bagel had to be toasted and they had to put extra cream cheese on it and i'm telling you nothing was worse to me and made my day just go to crap then when I opened the bagel and there's like barely any cream cheese on there. Um, there was twice that I actually went back in the store and I was like, I asked for extra, you guys charge me for extra and this is your normal amount, trust me because I come here every day. Um, so yeah, um, that was my like staple in the first trimester. If, my, if I did not have a bagel with cream cheese every day, it was, I mean, it, was, it just, my whole body felt off. And obviously to save money, I tried using, um, getting my own bagels and you know loading it up myself. It just didn't taste the same as a Tim Hortons bagel with cream cheese. I don't know what it was, but that's what I wanted. Another thing is, is you're gonna want what you want and you're not gonna want what you don't want, period. Um, you'll never feel full. I literally never felt full, ever. Um, lots of candy. I also craved tons and tons of candy. Um, anything sweet, pie, cake, Snickers, frozen Snickers. I also was walking my dogs once and had this huge craving for a Reese's peanut butter cup. I don't even really like Reese's peanut butter cups. So as soon as we got home, I drove to uh, Meyer to get some Reese's peanut butter cups. And lucky for me, they were having a uh, buy 10 for 10. So <laughs> I got 10 packs of Reese's peanut butter cups. Um, to satisfy myself. Obviously, I didn't eat 10. I only ate the one, but um, they're in the freezer for when that next craving comes. And another thing that you need to be aware of is food aversions, as weird as that is. Um, I really didn't have many, but eggs was something that I just could not, I just couldn't eat. I think it's because, um, because when I was, before I was pregnant, my breakfast every morning was scrambled egg whites with um, green peppers and deli turkey meat, a uh, little bit of feta. Um, obviously, I ate a lot of protein. I work out a lot. And so that was something that I was shocked about. And I couldn't eat eggs anymore. But, you know, it, it was one of those things where it was more along lines of I could I would eat it if, I, if it was in front of me. But it wasn't ever anything that sounded good. I wouldn't order it and I wouldn't cook it for myself. So that's another um, thing to be looking out for is food aversions. It's really, really weird. Um, and your sense of smell, wow, it is way on steroids. It is way up there, just along with your hormones. Everything became super annoying to me, super quick. I usually have 
great patience, but um, I really just found myself becoming very irritable and annoyed at the smallest, littlest things. And finally, let's go over some pet peeves that I've been receiving that I really didn't want to hear. First was people telling us that we couldn't travel anymore or we can't travel once the baby gets here. Um, that is something that my husband and I are very um, passionate about and we love doing. So it's already our plan to strap baby on and go. Baby's gonna be well-traveled. Um, you know, we, we had our plan to wait three years after marriage to have our first baby and here we are. We followed the plan accordingly and this is something that is just, it's, just gonna be an adjustment, but we're not gonna stop traveling just because we have a baby. Um, and for people to think that we can't travel because of that is crazy to me. Also, one other thing that really is driving me insane is people telling me that I can't work out anymore or I can't really do anything. It is more than safe to work out while you're pregnant. It's actually encouraged. Now, in the first trimester, Obviously, you have to listen to your body. I went from working out six days a week and lifting six days, or I lifted five days a week, but I would work out six days a week. On my sixth day, it was usually my cardio, uh, long cardio day. Um, but you have to listen to your body. And that was one thing that really bummed me out is during my first trimester, I only made it to the gym two days, maybe three, if I was really feeling it, which was a huge shock to me because I was so, um, so dedicated beforehand but just i mean you have to listen to your body when it's telling you you're tired you're tired you have to sleep you have to get your rest um you know especially in the first trimester when it's the highest chance of obviously a miscarriage so you have to listen to yourself you can't push yourself over the limits um so that's something i did obviously saunas and hot tubs are a no-go um obviously ask your doctor i'm not a doctor i can't tell you that um, you can or can't do something, but do it raises your internal temperature and that's something you have to be very uh, Careful of you know, you don't want to be scrambling your baby up in there <laughs> You know, but um, so you know, just gotta be really conscious of that um, Obviously with supplements. I don't take pre-workout anymore um, I do still have protein shakes. Those were okay by my doctor um, BCAAs okay by my doctor, but you really got to watch your supplements and making sure that you're not putting anything um, into your body that could you know potentially cause any um, adverse effects to your baby and finally another thing um, that was changed in my fitness is I had intermittent fasted for um, approximately a year year and a half prior to getting pregnant so that was a major change for me is going back to um, eating on a normal schedule. My intermittent fasting, I didn't eat till two, and I stopped eating between around eight o'clock at night. Sometimes I had my window open more if I was still hungry, or you know, if I did, just didn't even get around to eating till four o'clock, I would keep it open a little longer, obviously. Um, but obviously you can't do that when you're pregnant. My doctor's like, nope, I need you to eat breakfast, and then a snack, and then lunch, and a snack, and dinner, and a snack. And for me, that's very hard because I'm a very snacky person. Um, so when I went back to eating normal, you know, eating breakfast at eight o'clock in the morning and snack here, lunch there, it was really hard for me. I found myself going right back to my old ways of literally eating all day long, um, which caused me to gain weight a little bit faster than what it was te technically recommended by my doctor. Um, luckily now that I'm out of the first trimester and I'm able to gauge it a little bit better You know, it's probably not approved by my doctor, but now I typically don't eat breakfast until around 10 um, I don't haven't woke up lightheaded because um, this what you have to be watching out for is your blood sugar um, But I wasn't waking up feeling lightheaded and I wasn't really hungry So I listened to my body and once I was finally hungry, which ended up being around 10 a.m that's when I would eat and it actually helped me be able to eat a little bit better and control because that's one thing I always have struggled with is control um, when it comes to food and um, being super snacky. So um, that was my first trimester in a nutshell. I'm very excited. Um, you know, it's something that we've really been looking forward to. It was actually hard for us to stick to our three year plan, but we did and we're in the right space and right time um, financially and just everything for us. 
So we're really looking forward to this experience. If you guys like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and never forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on another pregnancy update. Um, I plan to do this throughout our whole pregnancy, update you along the way with my tips and tricks, obviously things that worked for me, but you know, things just may not work for you as they did for me but this is my first time going through this and experiencing it. So I'm sure many others are in that same position. So I'm just trying to help out as much as I can. Um, if you have any um, questions or comments or tips that you know you may have for us newbies, uh, make sure to leave them in the comments below. Um, so you know we can help each other out here. And that's it for this video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.